In this video, we're going to show how you can customize the markers when you use Action JavaScript to add markers to a map in a UX component. So you can see here we have a simple UX component with a map, and then we're going to have we have a button over here that's going to add multiple markers uh, to the map. So when we click the button, you can see that basically the markers get added to the map. And behind the scenes, we're just using uh, Action JavaScript. So we have a data series over here. And if we edit the data series, we see that there's um, static data here, which basically has a list of points. And there's some uh, data about each point, the name, the city, the state, the altitude, and then the latitude. Um, Sorry, the, the, the latitude and the longitude for each uh, for each data point, and then we've used um, Action JavaScript uh, uh, to populate the uh, to to put the markers on the map. So if we go over here to the event here, we can see we've used Action JavaScript. We've used the uh, Google Map methods for a UX component, and we've chosen the action called. Um, uh, add multiple markers to the map. We specified the name of our data series. Now in this case the data series was a static data series but it could it could just as easily have been a uh, query uh, that uh, retrieved data from um, uh, a SQL database or uh, a REST service or uh, uh, any kind of data source that you wanted. And then we specified that each um, marker on the map gets its latitude value from this uh, column in the data series and uh, this column uh, in uh, so the, the, long, the, the longitude comes from this column in the data series but we haven't specified uh, any customization for the marker icons so let's go ahead now and look at what uh, what options we have. So the first option that we have is to use a an image sequence. So let's uh, choose that option and we can go here and let's choose say this uh, sequence here that allows um, different uh, markers to be numbered 1 through 20. So this is good if you have less than 20 markers. If you have um, more than 20 but less than 100 you could use one of these two sequences. But let's just go ahead here and choose this uh, sequence. So we're now we're using this um, predefined sequence over here. And now when we go and we run the uh, the action, we'll see that the markers get added and each marker now has uh, its uh, unique ID. But we can go much further than that. And let's now, for example, go back here and um, define a conditional expression. So let's go back to the marker definition over here and go there and uh, let's go back to the uh, marker icon definition over here and now over here you can see we can define um, expressions that let us choose different markers based on data uh, in the, uh, the current row um, of the uh, data series. So let's go now and modify the data series so that we can use something in the data series uh, to uh, base a conditional expression on. So what you can see over here is I've gone back to my data series now and added a new uh, column here called type which has a value of A, B or uh, A, B, C or D in it. And we're going to basically make a uh, rule now for our our marker that says uh, that if the type is A we're going to use one uh, icon otherwise if it's B we'll use another and otherwise we'll use a third type so we'll go back now to our marker icon we'll go here and now we'll add a condition and our first condition is that the type over here equals A and then we'll go here and select an image so we could choose uh, a file but I'm going to just go here and choose a built-in image. I'll just choose, say, uh, this green ball over there. And then let's go now and uh, do another uh, condition for type equals B. So I'll go here and say um, type equals uh, B. And then I'll choose, say, a red um, uh, ball. And now let's pause and pick this up in the next video. So we're continuing now with our uh, discussion of how to create dynamic markers on a map when you add multiple markers to a map here. Uh, and uh, we've just added our second condition, but I see that we've made a mistake here. So this needs to be 
not uh, name but type so there's type equals B so that's our second condition and now we need a fall through condition which will be the condition that will be used if neither of these two conditions are true so let's go here and add our fall through condition so that's just going to be one equals one so the fall through condition is the last condition that you specify and it has an expression that is always guaranteed to be true uh, which one equals one is and then then let's go here and select our icon for this and we'll just choose say the uh, blue ball over there so now we have um, um, our three conditions type equals A, type equals B and then everything else so A is going to be green B is uh, red and everything else is blue so let's go ahead now and uh, run this so go over to uh, working preview and uh, tap the button so there's our green icons over there there's our two red icons for type equals B and there's everything else uh, with the blue icons so at this point we've discussed how you can use um, uh, condition expressions and also how you can basically use uh, image sequences but a third option gives you um, the um, most power and that is to create a custom X basic function so let's go back to the uh, builder right now and we'll go over here and we'll specify uh, this time uh, the third option here which is specify an xbasic function so we'll go here and we'll call this say uh, xb marker we'll get the prototype of the function over here we'll copy that to the clipboard and then we'll basically go over to our uh, xbasic functions over here and then uh, paste this in and now we need to specify code that will uh, return the icon to use for um, um, uh, for each uh, row in the uh, data series so basically if we go and we look inside this uh, um, uh, function as it executes let's go here and put in a debug one so uh, at this point we haven't specified the return value of the function so uh, the map isn't going to have any markers on it because we haven't specified what icon to use but we will be able to debug into the function so if we go here now and we click add markers we can see that uh, we've just been called now we're in the xbasic function and if we look inside the e object here we can see that row number equals one so this is the first entry in the data series the first row in the data series and then you can see if we go here to e dot table so e dot um, e dot tbl we can see that we have the data from the uh, first uh, from the first uh, marker point so we have basically the city the latitude so this is all of the values that are in the data series for the first row in the data series and we've got type equals a over here so we can write an x basic um, uh, um, a statement that returns the name of the icon that we want to use so let's go back now and modify this X basic to actually uh, return um, an icon based on the value say in this uh, state field over here so uh, we now need to modify this uh, X basic function so that it returns the name of a marker so if we go back to our web project folder here you can see that in the web project folder I've got a, um, a folder here called map icons and inside map icons I've got uh, various icons over here which I actually got off uh, off the web so if we go and just quickly take a look at the uh, icons here we can see these are different map icons and you can typically find map icons by doing a, um, a Google search so let's um, uh, use say the um, um, fireman icon if type equals A and say the library icon if type equals B otherwise we'll use um, say the uh, congress icon so let's pause now and then modify our X basic function so continuing now with our video on how to dynamically uh, define the icons, the, the marker icons when you add markers to a map, we're now uh, using an X basic function to compute what the marker icon should be for each um, uh, marker. And uh, we're going to mo now modify our uh, X basic function. So 
uh, I've copied some code here to the clipboard that I'm going to paste in. So we're going to go here and say dim data is p and then data equals e dot uh, tbl. So this is just basically creating a pointer to this object e dot tbl so that we can have code here that reads a little nicer. So we're saying that if the type equals a then we're going to use this um, uh, image otherwise if the type equals b and then we'll use this image and then our fall through is uh, this image. So these are images that we just went and we retrieved from um, a Google search uh, looking for Google Map uh, icon. So let's go now and run this in um, uh, live preview and when we tap the button to add the markers we can see that the various markers uh, get added. Now I should point out that if we were to go into working preview it wouldn't work right now and that's because um, the icons wouldn't be found so there's a, uh, a technique that you can use here to use a special uh, placeholder so if I go here and say a5 underbar um, web project folder. This tells uh, Working Preview uh, where the uh, images are located and if I go there now and paste that in over there and paste this in over here we'll see that it now works in Working Preview correctly and it also uh, still continues to work in uh, Live Preview as uh, well. So of course in Live Preview these uh, images that are in the Map Icons folder would need to be published uh, to the Live Preview uh, folder. So what we've shown in this uh, video is how you can dynamically set the uh, marker icons when you add multiple markers to a map in a UX component and the three different uh, choices are to use an image sequence, to use um, dynamic expressions and then to just write custom xbasic function that gets called for each marker and you can then return the uh, name of the marker uh, icon file that you want to use. Thanks very much for watching.